חנוך רוזן, שלום. And welcome to culture buzz. חנוך, what is it exactly that you are doing? אז ככה, אני אין מים. Everybody when he sees me or she sees me in the streets, they ask, can you speak as well? Because uh, I'm a kind of uh, the national mime here in Israel. Uh, and your wonderful performance, this is the place to mention it, is called Speechless. Speechless, yes it is. It's a one-man journey in a 3D world. Uh, I took the art of mime and I tried to put it in, uh, in our day's life. You know, it's a very high technology show with screens, LED, um, you know, very advanced uh, lighting, staging, etc. And uh, I perform with this show all over the world. I feel like a, an ambassador with no words for my country. And you are probably one of the best ones. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I travel uh, in, in, in the States, in Europe. I uh, just finished a tour of seven weeks in Holland in theaters. came from Berlin before and I'm going my way to Mexico and um, hopefully I'm going to do um, Broadway soon uh, with this show. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, well uh, we, we, uh, we won with this show the best um, entertainment uh, theater uh, show of the year in Israel in theater awards. As and you deserve. Thank you so much and, uh, and uh, really it's, it's for the whole family, it's for the whole uh, <clears throat> it's for the whole uh, people wherever they are you know because it's talking about our life today here in this world you know our wishes our thoughts the way we uh, we treat ourselves in this uh, high-speed life with all the uh, the internet that is surviving with uh, that we have to survive with and all the the uh, the, um, the high-tech that is that is around us so I'm trying to to find the man within all this environment and First of all, I'll start with a confession. I am relieved that you can actually speak. <laughs> yeah. And in Israel, uh, when you say mime, it's like saying Hanoch Rosen and vice versa. Right. I was fortunate enough to, uh, to start my, my artistic, um, artistic uh, way in, uh, in an era that we had only one channel on the TV. So once you did something on the TV, everybody saw you, and I, was, I had a lot of programs in the TV, etc. So this kind of art is a very a visual art, so the TV helped me to, to get well known to everybody. And also the subject that I use in my art is, a very <clears throat> is, 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 is speaking in the eye level of everyone, you know. It's not like, not, I don't want to take it as a highbrow artistic, artistic um, thing, you know. You make it look very easy, but I know how difficult it is. <laughs> you must keep in shape. Absolutely. You must uh, work on your act constantly yes. and make it better. I go back because I, I am also the same generation. Okay. I remember the, only, the first and only channel. I think about great mimers. Do you say mimers? Mimers, yes, mimers? mimers in the world. Yes. Uh, in Israel and the... First name that jumps to my mind is the late Shaikh Ophir. Absolutely. Shaikh Ophir was an amazing mime, but he was so good as an actor. Uh, so people mostly remember him as an actor in the films, etc. But he was an amazing mime with a beautiful control in his body. And uh, <clears throat> he just, uh, you know, he just um, uh, worked. He was working afterwards with uh, Yoram Boker. He's a very good uh, mime as well. And Juki Arkin, uh, Israel Gurion, he's still doing that. Uh, he, who is also a singer and an actor so right. and Ezra Dagan as well and uh, a lot of a lot of very good Israeli uh, uh, mimes that most of them did some other things as well so that's why they're not remembered as mimes only um, I'm a director as well but as a performer I only I'm, I'm only doing mimes so uh, they know me you were kind enough to mention other mimes in Israel of course will you be kind enough uh, Hanoch <clears throat> to mention other colleagues, mimes in the world, especially those who have been your inspiration? Well, you know that uh, when we speak about inspiration in the silent uh, comedy or the silent artistry, uh, of course we start usually with Charlie Chaplin, who is an inspiration for everybody. The greatest. Uh, the greatest, who was not only a mime and an acrobat and a, <clears throat> and a director and a writer, and he wrote the music as well, 
uh, for his movies. Uh, he was an inspiration for everyone. A Renaissance man, actually. And uh, after him came uh, as a mime, of, of course, uh, uh, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and all those people. And uh, Marcel Marceau, who is, who is really the mime of the century because he. <clears throat> he took the art of mime that uh, he learned with Decou, that I also learned with him, uh, and put it and gave it to the audience all around the world. He was a very artistic man with a very strong personality on stage. Um, and nowadays there are, there are some good mime clowns around the world. Not so many, because this is an artistry that you have to really devote yourself to it. You know? And um, not so many do that, but there are some very, still very good mimes in the world. Maybe the inevitable question. You are a Sabra, if I'm not wrong. You were born I was born in London, oh. but, but, but you I grew, grew up, up in Israel. Israel. Yes. So here comes the inevitable question. Yes. Israel, uh, you can say many things about Israel. It's not a quiet place. Absolutely. It's probably the opposite. Absolutely. Why did you choose mine? Well, maybe there's so much noise around, so I have to be quiet. Uh, the thing is that I think that uh, it's, Israel sends a message of art uh, to all over the world. Uh, we have a lot of artistic life here, you know, in compared to the size of the country, which is so small. And uh, we have so good dancers and musicians and theater and everything. And, we are uh, making lots of buzz. A lot of buzz, Much yes. bigger than our actual uh, size. Absolutely. So uh, I think that it's, it's just, uh, just a must to have, a, to have a, 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 an ambassador with no words, because that's what I'm doing, really. And that gives me the chance to perform, really, in South America, in the Far East. Europe, wherever you, you want, and the audience react the same everywhere to this kind of art. You are able to touch people. That's what I'm trying to do. Without uttering one word. Absolutely. Which is a miracle. Absolutely. I say in, this, in, the, in, the, in the last uh, performance that, that I do, in, the, in this performance that I do, which is called Speechless, I say four words in the show, just in the end of the show, four words. And, uh, but I think that people, all, they don't feel that I'm not speaking because, all, first of all, it's surrounded by a lot of visual things, you know, I'm coming in and out from the screens, I'm doing a lot of uh, <clears throat> effects and sound effects and music and it's light a high, effects. It's a high-tech performance. It's a very high-tech performance. I come with another uh, 10 technicians to the show, wow. you know, two trucks and it's a big, big... Like Madonna. Uh, <laughs> not so much, but <laughs> yeah, it's a big show and... Um, it's a spectacular show, which I want to do it because I would like to wrap it in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that the people today, the young generation, would feel that it's something that is speaking to him. And then when they come to the show, I'm trying to go deeper and to touch their feelings. And from what we hear, you are doing a fantastic job. Uh, thank you so much. When it comes to the content of your works, yes. Uh, where do you take the subjects from? Where? Well, I'm looking around. The thing is that you have to open, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, uh, as an artist, you know, you have to open your eyes, look around you, and get the inspiration. So I'm speaking really about our life, our man, his problems, his thoughts. Uh, you know, I have a, I have a piece about <clears throat> about an airport. So we know the airports around the world now. Everybody knows it about the security. For me, as a mime, a mime comedian, I'm trying to, to treat it in a, in a comic way. So I'm trying to look at the fun about all those uh, uh, endless, uh, endless uh, inspections for, for security that you have to take out your shirt, you have to take out your, your belt, you have to take out your shoes. It becomes a striptease in my, in my show. And uh, there are many other characters together with me on the screens and we all act together. Just, this is just one example. I'm trying to give the example of the man that is running towards a goal. You know, he's trying in his life all the time to achieve something. From his childhood, he has to go to school, he has to go to the army in Israel. He has to get married, he has to have a children, he has to get work, he has to be successful, blah, blah, blah. And he's running all the time to reach a destination. And when he reaches that destination, he just looking back and says, "That's it. That, that's the destination. It's the end." Amazing. So we have to. We have. I want to send a message. Let's enjoy. Let's think. Let's live the way, not only the goal, the end. Not only a mime, also a philosopher. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying. I'm trying to tell stories, to send messages, to give emotions. Right. Uh, I wanted to ask you. Mime is a language, <clears throat> and it's cosmopolitan. 
anybody should be able to understand it. But what makes, if at all, your work Israeli? Well, I think there is a kind of <clears throat> a, I would say, chutzpah, an Israeli chutzpah, or something character of a sabra that is a little bit more rough in my show, a little bit. Um, I'm trying to be uh, very warm with the audience. It's not something cold and far away, you know, it's something very warm. I'm making the connection with the, with the, uh, with the, with the audience. I'm taking people from the audience to the stage. So it's a kind of thing that is, uh, the warmth, I think, goes, goes out there. And um, and uh, and um, and in the in the in the pieces where I where I take people from the audience on the stage, it's really uh, an Israeli celebration kind of. Our mimes still uh, insist on uh, being dressed in white. Well, no. Uh, there was a time that uh, I performed with a white makeup on the face, mm, and the reason is that is to be very clear from far away. But then when I got a little bit more known in Israel, so I took it out because most of the mimes when they put uh, white makeup, they look the same. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I wanted to be a little bit uh, more personal. So I took the makeup out and, and uh, no, the, my, my show has a lot of costumes, it, it changes, it's very spectacular. So, uh, so no, not only white. Performing in Israel as well? Yes, absolutely. Now uh, in a vacation, but uh, performing again uh, in, in, in October, starting again all over the country uh, in theaters. And uh, <clears throat> I love the, the Israeli audience and I love to perform in Israel, outside of Israel. And uh, of course I'm directing as well. You know that I'm a director, so I direct as well most of the big shows, big extravaganzas. And that's completely different from what I'm doing on stage, because on stage I'm really one man on stage surrounded by a lot of screens etc but in my, the show that I direct I direct like 60, 70, 100 people on stage wow. dancers, acrobats, wow. fire, light, water and the stage is going up and down it's a big show and you show. have to speak and I have to speak with everybody and tell them what to do yes uh, your career is truly impressive you have accomplished so much and you have a wonderful reputation and you have worked very hard for that I'm still working hard. What can we wish Hanoch Rosen for the future? Well, uh, let's, let's wish for me, if, if you may please, that I'll be still a creative, that I will create new and interesting uh, pieces and shows, and that I will continue to be able to perform. This is a, a physical uh, job, and you have to be strong on stage. And, um, you know, I broke my leg like three years ago. I fell from the stage. Oi. Uh, Where was it? <clears throat> that was in Rehovot. Really? Just before the show. I was dangerous there, place. A very dangerous place. <laughs> I was standing on the... And then I was looking and I didn't see that I'm on the edge of the stage. I fell down. I broke my leg. I couldn't perform for three months. Our body is very delicate, so I have to keep it. Um, and this is first. I have to keep it in shape. And the mind. The mind is more, is more important. You have to be creative, to have the inspiration, and to continue and uh, to create new things, new shows. Do you teach as well? Not yet, not yet. That's I, that I leave for the for the for the for the for the future. I can't think of anybody that will make a better teacher than you. <laughs> I will, I will teach, I will teach, but not now. Later on. Hanoch, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. To wish you a wonderful vacation. Thank you so much. And thank you for enriching our lives. See you in one of my shows. Thank you very much. Definitely be there. Tada shalom.